Anyway, um, <laughs> on this week's show, what are we talking about? Well, we have an interview with the Billboard 200 chart-topping group Pentatonics. The group of the week. The group of the week. They celebrated their first number one album on the Billboard 200, so stick around for that interview later on in the show. Uh, before that, we will dive into just how Pentatonics got to number one and how it was actually a pretty close race for the top of the chart. Also in the mix this week on the show, Adele has a new single. Ref, play it back. Because as soon as it posts, there's like five new things that just yeah. happened. So we're playing catch up. Um, Pentatonics, I think, uh, is one of the big stories this week. Yeah. Their new album, it's a self-titled album, debuts at number one on the Billboard 200 albums chart. It's their first, this is, this is how they're calling it. It's their first full-length, uh, all original album. Right, because they're known for their acapella covers, right. and that's how they got famous on the sing off. And they competed and, on the sing off, like, yeah, four years, five years. And ago. so now they're doing their own music, right? Still doing the acapella arrangements they're known for, but it's their own stuff. Yeah, the whole album is actually acapella, and when you listen to the album, you don't really immediately think that. Like you think the sounds you're hearing, I'm like, oh, that's it. Oh no, my god, that's someone's mouth. Yeah, it's um, crazy. Like, oh my god, that's someone's <laughs> mouth. Um, but actually, and the, um, by the way, the album itself, uh, there is actually one cover. Um, it's a cover of, uh, Shy's If, If, uh, If I Ever I Fall in Love. If you're going to cover something, that's the one to cover. It's pretty. It's a karaoke classic. It's great. <laughs> like, and it features Jason Derulo. Awesome. And, um, actually stick around for the interview later. We talk about how they got together with, uh, Jason to record the song. Um, and it's a fun story. And um, yeah, so anyway, but Pentatonix debuts at number one. It sold, oh, sorry, it didn't sell. Remember, we're talking about units, consumption units, fancy consumption units. It moved more than. Earned. (laughs) Earned more than. It it shifted. It shifted slightly more than 98,000 units, of which 88,000 were in pure album sales. Right behind it was Demi Lovato's Confident with 98,000 units. Um, of which 77,000 were in pure album sales. So it was a pretty close race um, for number one, um, which we actually wrote uh, like a week ago. We said that it was the two albums neck were fine. Yeah, yeah, so it could have gone either way. Um, worked out for Pentatonix. They got their first number one. Yeah. Um, Demi has actually been number one before. So, so we're just sharing the wealth in the right, music world. Right. And also, this is her, I think it's her fifth straight top five album. Wow. Um, which is her entire output. Yeah. So she's doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't feel bad for Demi. She's all right. <laughs> she's still confident. She's still very confident. <laughs> she's confident in her chart success. Um, I'll Ref, play it back. Um, so I think it's time for our Pentatonix interview. Yes, I think so. Um, I had the opportunity to go talk to uh, the full group, all five of the folks, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago at a hotel. Um so this is before they had their big news about yeah, this the number is before one album. Yeah, the number one. So I couldn't ask them about that, but we did talk about the album and how this is something they've always been. They've always wanted to do. They've always, you know, they didn't want to just become like a cover group, right? Um, and we talked specifically about a couple songs on the album, including their new um, Jason Derulo, uh, which track, which happens to be a cover. Um, but they were lovely, and I actually interrupted their lunch. Um, <laughs> Because I, I got there, and everything was kind of running late, and they were doing a series of interviews, and I walked in, and it was in a hotel room. It was like a hotel suite. And I get there, and there's a whole crew, and they're all setting up, and I'm like, I don't see Pentatonix anywhere. And I, I no one really tells, like, no one's stopping you from, like, I mean, I didn't know where I was going, <laughs> even though it was just like a room. And I thought, like, I heard, like, I saw rumblings in the back room, and I'm like, oh, I think they're all back there. So I started to walk back there, and then I get there, and it's actually a bedroom. And, like, Pentatonix is, like, sort of, like, laying on a bed and, like, you know, in chairs. They're, like, eating food. They're, like, taking a break, checking their cell phones. I'm like, oh, I think I walked too far. Let me walk backwards now. <laughs> and then, you know, a couple minutes later go by, and then they all come out. And I was like, I told them, I'm like, I can do it in here. I can record you guys in here while you're eating. You know, I don't want to interrupt you. And they're like, no, 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 we'll come out. And so there's a recurring gag, like, where I kept harassing them. I'm like, I have to let you go back to your lunch. And they're like, shut up about the lunch. Right. Anyway, here's our interview with Pentatonix. Uh, yay. <laughs> Yay! Welcome to the Billboard Pop Shop Podcast, Pentatonix! Hey! 
I totally don't believe any of that effervescence right now. <laughs> what do you mean? I stole you. I stole you guys away from lunch, and now I feel bad because there's yeah, food in the furious. other room. Yeah, we're furious. Absolutely. It's over. Um, I'm here because we're talking about your new album, which is your first album where it's I think almost all original material except mm -hmm. there's one cover. Mm -hmm. And I know that from times in the past where I've talked to you on various red carpets. You, ha you have always said how you wanted to work towards making an original album. So this is clearly like dream come true moment sort of deal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We're so thankful that we finally get this opportunity to just showcase who we want to be as an artist. You know, our own lyrics, our own vision, our own kind of ideas, finally, I think, in this album. And, I, and I, we hope that the fans enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I was gonna. I was. Oh no, no, he covered it. <laughs> You're like, nope, he's got it. We're done. <laughs> um, what, but I mean, at the beginning, was that always the goal? Like, because you released like four, like two, two or three different EPs, a Christmas album. Was that always the goal? Like, we want to do an original album. But yeah, I think we've always wanted to be recognized as artists. I think the the sing off was just a great platform for us to. to develop our sound using covers, but we never wanted to just be kind of a cover band. Cover we band. wanted to be artists. We do have a lot to say, and I feel like now that we um, have grown together for four and a half years now, like we've really solidified our sound and what we want to do and um, what we want to say. And That's so, so like, it's jealous. exciting. On the new album, which I listened to a couple times yesterday, and I have notes, so there's papers and stuff. Um, the songs that I was really impressed by, well, I mean, I was impressed by all of them, but I really liked Rose Gold a lot. Thank you. Um, who wrote the material on the album? Was it you guys collaborating with songwriters that you wanted yeah. to work with? Mm -hmm. uh, like all of us in different duos and trios with songwriters. So like, mm -hmm. was it was like a writing camp sort of thing where you, like A&R people matched you up with people or was it a little yeah. bit more Yeah, totally, yeah. It was totally that. Mm -hmm. It's like, so Rihanna's team came in and started, because I don't actually have the songwriters and producers, so this is where you tell me, who worked on Rose Gold with you? It was, it was a guy named Drew Pearson. Oh, okay. um, and he's awesome. He was like responsible for this home by Philip Phillips, and he was like this really nice, super um, chill guy. And he had started the song, and Avi and I met with him, and we were just so inspired by it. Um, water is such a great song too. I need you like water. I mean, just the way the sounds of it, where it's it's taking what we're familiar with with you and then sort of extending it into something that's a little bit more familiar to, I guess, a sort of a mainstream pop audience, which I know sounds dippy to say. But like these songs to me don't sound like they would be out of place on the radio. Was right. that part of the intention to sort of go in a, in a route where I would turn on KISS FM and I would hear these songs on the radio? Absolutely. Yeah, it's finding yeah. the balance. I think it's also just a part of each one of us too. I think the album's really eclectic, but the, the sound that we give ties it all together and it's just telling of all the different pieces of us too because we all listen to a bunch of different music too right. but all help each other it was cool to be writing with a bunch of different songwriters and with each other because we each pull each other in different ways until we find like that best possible product so um it was really cool how did and this is the one song that is not a cover or not, the one song that is a cover the one with jason derulo mm -hmm. yeah fall in love how did that, I mean, I know, how did that song come together? Like, <laughs> did, did you call Jason? Did you run into him backstage at a show? We're like, I yeah. got this great idea. <laughs> it's actually, I'll, I, it's a funny story, I'll tell it really quick, but basically, we were yeah, so filming. Really quick. We've got all the time in the world. Okay. <laughs> Your food's getting cold in the other room. No, it's just a really long story, but <laughs> we, we were filming Dick Clark's New Year's Eve, and Jason Derulo was also filming that same day, and then Kevin saw him in the hallway and went up to him, and was just like, hey, we're big fans. And, uh, very brave. And then Jason Derulo was like, I'm a big fan too, and so they exchanged numbers. And he we also got, seems like genuinely like the oh, nicest person. He is the nicest person. Yeah. Yeah. Hard working, uh, so down to earth. I know you're super media trained, but I'm like, you actually seem like you're genuine when I talk to you. Oh yeah, he's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. No, he was so good. It was fascinating yeah. meeting him and seeing how he worked in the yeah. studio. It was like, it was just awesome. I was speechless was cool. just watching and like listening to him. It was really, it was, really it was cool. Extremely professional. So nice. Yeah. And we got on a call with him, and then I just suggested we do the song "If I Ever Fall in Love." It's a song I fell in love with when I was like a little kid. I like loved it so you much. You were like about two at the time. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I heard it when I was like eight or nine on the radio randomly, the acapella version. Mm -hmm. And um, I he I suggested that, and he was obsessed with the song. So he's like, "We don't even have to talk about anything else." This is like five minutes into the call. He's like, "We're doing that 100 percent." So we met in the studio, and and we didn't really know where it was gonna. Be if it was going to be for our album, his album, a single, but um, it, we just fell in love with the final product, and so we had to put it on the album. Wow. 
Thanks so much to Pentatonix for taking the time out of their crazy promotional schedule to speak with us on the show. And congratulations on your first number one album. Amazing. You know what time it is now?